Hey traders, it's Brandon from Amphibian Trading, and in this video, we are going to be going over how to use the Equity Trade Risk Manager, which is the indicator that I just released for TradingView. Now, before we dive into it, please hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. I'm gonna be making more videos on how to use and interpret many of the indicators I've created. So if that's something you're gonna be interested in, make sure that you're subscribed. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into the trade risk manager. The indicator itself is pretty simple and the goal of it is to help you calculate how many shares of a stock to buy or short or to tell you where to place your stop based on your entry and your risk tolerance. So I'm gonna quickly go through all of the settings so you can understand what each setting does and then we'll take a look at some examples. So let's go ahead and pull up the settings for the indicator and we'll go through this first block, the account and risk settings. First up, we have our account size. By default, this is set to $100,000 but you're gonna to wanna to change that to whatever the account size is that you trade. Next to it, we have this equity risk and we have some predetermined values here. And what these are, are the amount of your capital that you're willing to risk per trade as a percentage. So if you have this a quarter of a percent selected, that means you are willing to risk $250 of a $100,000 account on the trade. If you have it at half a percent, that would be $500 and so on. If you don't wanna use any of these predetermined values, you can go down to this next line and select custom equity risk. You can check that and set this to whatever you want. So say you wanted to risk 1% per trade, you would just simply change that to a one. If you wanted to risk one and a half percent, you would do 1.5. So you're gonna enter that value as a percentage if you don't wanna use any of these predetermined values. So let's use a custom and we'll set it back to one just for easy math sake in the examples. So we're gonna be risking 1% of a $100,000 account, which is $1,000 per trade. Next up, we have this calculate line, and this line determines what the indicator is gonna calculate. We have this little drop down, and you can see it's either shares to buy or your stop loss. So we'll start with the shares to buy, and then later we'll go through an example of the indicator calculating a stop loss. And then the last setting in the account and risk settings is this use fractional shares. And what this is, is just for higher price securities. If you trade fractional shares, you can go ahead and select that and it will show you how many fractional shares to buy rather than just rounding to the nearest whole number. Okay, moving on, let's get into the price level settings. So the first one we have is our entry price. By default, it's just set to zero. However, you can enter whatever price you are planning on entering a trade or whatever price you have already entered the trade. So on the chart here, I have IOT pulled up. We'll use today's high as an example, $30 and let's see, $31 and 20 cents. So we'll just put that in there as our high. That's gonna be our entry price for the first example we go through. If you wanted to, you could also use this current price. And if I select that, it's gonna override whatever entry price I have in here and just use the current price of the chart, which in this example would be $30.85. I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that for now though. Next up, we have our stop price. Similar to the entry price, we can either type in a price manually or we can hit this use a major level. I'll go through the major levels in just a second. But for this first example, let's say our stop price is gonna be the low of yesterday's bar, which was $30.24, so you could type that in. And then now, if you look over in this top right, you can see the indicator calculated how many shares to buy, what your position size would be, and your dollar risk, which we determined up on this first account and risk settings. Okay, so now let's take a look if we were to use one of these major levels. Okay, so if I go ahead and click use a major level, it's gonna override whatever we have in the stop price and it's gonna use whatever we select from this next line, major levels. So by default, we have the low of the day, a swing low, which I'll explain how that's calculated in just a second. We have a percent ATR from the low of the day. And then if you are going short the stock, you can select the high of the day, a swing high, or a percent ATR from the high of the day. So for the sake of this example, let's just go ahead and use the low of the day. And you can see up here how it's changed. We now have 1352 for the shares to buy with a $42,000 position size. 
if I uncheck this and go back to that $30.24 stop, you can see now it's 1,042 shares with a $32,500 position size. So it automatically adjusts based on that. Again, if we click that major level, you can use a swing low and you'll see how it changes again. Or if you do the 8% ATR from the low of the day, again, it changes. It calculates based on these values you select. So let's go into the major levels quick. I'll explain how a pivot is calculated. So this first setting, pivot length, is used to determine the swing lows and the swing highs. So if you're looking for a swing low and you have this set to two, you need to have a low with two bars to the left and two bars to the right that have higher lows. So for example, this would be a swing low here. I don't think we have any other swing lows. No, we don't. That would be your swing low on this chart. Same thing though for a swing high. So we have this high here and we have two bars to the left with lower highs and two bars to the right with lower highs. So this would be a swing high if you were going short. So you can adjust this setting to determine what you consider a swing high or low. If I were to set this down to a one, then our swing low would change and it would be this bar here because we have one bar to the left that has a higher low and one bar to the right that has a higher low. From there, we have the ATR length and the ATR multiplier. You can adjust this up or down. You can even use fractionals if you wanted to do a one and a half multiplier there. So you can change those settings however you'd like. The last setting block we have is the display settings. So this first one, show stop loss on chart. If I go ahead and select that, you can see we get this red line drawn where our stop loss would be and also the price that it's at. So we have this set to a swing low with a pivot length of one. So it sets it to this bar here, just how I explained. We have one bar to the left with a higher low and one bar to the right with a higher low, making this our most recent swing low. From there, we have the table position, which is gonna be this table here. We can adjust this, we can move it pretty much anywhere on the chart. You can also adjust the size if you want it to be bigger or smaller. You can change the text color and the background color as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set these back to the default black text with a white background. Let's go ahead now and take a look at some examples. So. Using IOT again, we have our entry price set to 3120, which is above the high of today's bar. We're gonna use the recent swing low as our stop, so $30.24 right here since we have our pivot length set to one. And we have a $100,000 account risking 1%. So with all those settings, this is saying that we could buy 1,042 shares and we would risk are $1,000, which is what we determined was acceptable. If I were to change the stop, say to the low of today, you can see now it tells us we can afford more shares, keeping our risk at that same level. If we change the stop to the percent ATR low of the day, we'll notice it changes again. Now we have much less shares because we wanna keep our risk level to the same amount. Now, for example, if you were gonna short the stock, you could change your stop price to one of these other major levels like the high of the day or a swing high or the percent ATR from the high of the day and you can see how the stops adjust. So let's go with a recent swing high. I'm actually gonna change this pivot length to two so we get this higher high here. So 3241 and let's say we went short at, let's change our entry price to the low of today. So 3046. Let's go ahead and do that. So if we were to break this low, we would go short. And it's saying that doing that with our stop up here at the swing high, we could short 512 shares and we would be in our $1,000 risk parameter. And again, from there, you can adjust to the high of the day. You could adjust to the percent ATR and all of the shares to buy will change and it will keep your risk at that same determined amount. Okay, so let's go ahead now really quick and take a look at determining a stop loss rather than the shares to buy. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this calculate to stop loss instead of shares to buy. We'll go ahead and get that set up. We're gonna say our entry price again is above the high of today, so 31.20. 
and we are planning on buying, let's say, 500 shares. I'm going to go ahead and type that in the shares owned. And now if you see here, it's going to tell us that our stop loss could be 29.20 to keep us in that risk parameter. And you can also do that to the short side as well. You would just need to enter these shares owned as a negative number. So if you put negative 500, then this would think that you are short and you can see that it puts your stop loss up above there. One thing you'll notice is that if I, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off of my chart, I'm gonna add it back on. When I first put the trade risk manager on, it's gonna come up, it's gonna ask me to confirm all these inputs and that is just so that it can calculate right away for you. So for demonstration's sake, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit use current price. I'm gonna use the major level of a swing low, set it to one and you can see how quickly that calculates my stop loss, entry, my dollar risk, everything there. I hope you enjoy this indicator. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any future updates.